Hello YouTube and newsletter subscribers, this is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is January 1st, 2015. This is the Black Star Update report connected to Terrell's 2015 newsletter volume number one. And here we go. Looking at the seismic chart, then the values are that they're within expected parameters, if you want to say. This uh, 250 value from last week right here was a little bit high. And then I was saying that this is going to bounce. This is going to be a bouncing value, which you can see through these, what's happened recently. And so we had the high value last week, 250, bounced up from 215, but back down to 227. This value is going to be 170 to 180 by the time we get to February the 1st. It's pretty much what we're looking for for outside orbit uh, position when we make the right triangle with the sun and the black star. I can show you right here. The black star appears to be trailing Libra four to five degrees. I'd say that it's about in this area right here. We pass behind the sun right where, where we're looking right now, right behind the sun on November the 15th, 2014 to begin this lull period. The reason that we're having a lull period is the black stars over here. We came into alignment back here and then now we're going to outside orbit position on this side while the black star is still moving this way. So that's why magnetic portal connection well, as it nears proximity, as it's, as it's coming in closer and closer, velocity is increasing and the black star is outpacing. Earth's moved to outside orbit position. Now notice when we get there, look at, you see, look at the date down below, January 30th. At the end of the month, you notice that we're coming between the Sun and Jupiter. Right? You also see Mercury. That's right in here. So when the Earth gets right in this area, right in here, we're going to see high seismic uptick caused by the trough between Jupiter and the Sun. And this is beginning the, the next earth change uptick period right around February the 1st. So usually when the earth gets into about this position, at outside orbit position, I'm talking about within the 90 degree uh, angle for the black star, then we see a pair of seven magnitude earthquakes, but this is going to be interrupted this time by Jupiter. So expect to see a lot of shakers right in here, earth cavitation from passing between uh, you know, the largest planet, the gas giant in our solar system, and the sun, this is normal stuff. So my pair of seven magnitude quakes, they have happened every, to begin every orbit cycle, uh, to begin every Earth change uptick period since this investigation began in 2011, with the exception when Jupiter gets in the way, and it's going to be in the way, definitely going to be in the way this time. So that's where we are let's see let's go back to the date again we're on January the 1st so see we're about at this position so we're getting ready to make that move to outside orbit position right okay then let's look at the earthquake data for the previous week and you see the void that's in here that was filling up last week now everything's settling again because we're in the lull period right there's only one quake in this this frozen area through 13.7 over the last week and we saw a little flurry here last week but if you notice and what was it four months ago we were looking at the quake swarm activity off of Kamchatka and Alaska with the pressure shifting towards Alaska and Baja California these two swarm areas are still intact but this is a whole week before you know three months ago these flags stack of flags went extremely high so because of the lull period that we're in right now that's why you see these these quake swarm areas decreasing in activity and that's precisely what we see in the seismic chart down here again the the values there they're decreasing this is this increase in five magnitude quakes that's still about the same as 27 the high mark here is going to be 43 see 43 from this week of uh, the beginning of December the 43 value is decreasing so expect these values to continue bouncing but with a trajectory that is going down and until all of a sudden these you see all these sixes you see up in here they're going to come back whenever we pass in the trough between jupiter so i expect to see that but zeros or ones until we get there is what it is is what i'm expecting then look year over year see 258 here 231 see you're about almost 30 quakes above normal look at the week before 60 quakes I'm not I shouldn't say above normal but above what we saw last year you're seeing 60 to 70 quakes now here's only 16 right but you're seeing up you know up to you know between 15 and 70 the increase week over week you know with a few exceptions here's here's only one difference for last year 
but generally we're seeing quite a number of quakes you see the total value remember this is only 30 to 40 percent of the earthquakes that you're going to see the USGS reporting globally but even their their fabricated number is what 2100 higher than last year and that's what we're seeing year over year every year now along with the uptick of meteors and uh, fireballs things like that then remember newsletter subscribers the this this 2015 newsletter along with the for, you know the first three or four for this year they're going to appear in the 2014 Dropbox folder until I can get the notification emails sent out to everybody that takes a little bit of time so it could, it could take me two or three weeks remember I've got your emails uh, each morning and working on the newsletter each morning and so I have a certain amount of time to each day to send out those notifications but in two or three weeks everybody will be notified and then every all the uh, the relative PDF files will be moved into the 2015 Dropbox folder for those. So those of you that are not planning on subscribing, but you have access to the 2014 Dropbox folder, you need to get in there and get those PDFs because they're going to disappear here in about three weeks from the 2014. The only thing going to be left in that folder is the newsletters, right? Just like when you go to my website, explain a little bit. Then you see these two links. There's going to be a 2014 link that appears here, and if you go, if you click on these, you can have all of the newsletters for free. Anybody can have them. 2012 and 2013 and 2014. Only news, newsletter subscribers are going to have the 2015 Dropbox folder for the 2015 newsletters. If that makes sense, subscribe right here. Donate to the research right down here. And if you are not a newsletter subscriber and you you, know, you don't have PayPal but you want to subscribe, you can contact me at terrello3. Terrell at terrell3.com and I will give you another method to be able to subscribe to Terrell's 2014 newsletters. So then I wanted to pull this page up and make note that the bottom value, this is the magnetic North Pole migration that's been tracked. If you were shown the previous four years, you would see that this path is becoming wider and wider and we're able to predict the dates. This bottom date, the bottom of the chart is what I'm trying to predict and the top of the chart the top value so this is the period the time that the magnetic North Pole is moving towards Siberia this is the period that it's moving away from Siberia so we're when you're looking at the magnetic pole migration on the internet on Google or something then they're not showing you these loops they're they're stopping yearly and giving you a mark a progression mark towards Siberia but what we've been managed to do in this investigation project black star investigation is determine the date of the bottom of the loop and the top because the reason that the magnetic North Pole is migrating in a series of loops is because the Earth is orbiting around the Sun and we have another magnet that is now in the Libra constellation and the bottom value is the day after we cross the black star orbit path May the 20th right and the top of the chart is November the uh, 16th the one day after we cross behind the sun relative to the black star. So I just wanted to show you that information and we've looked at the solar system, we've looked at the earthquakes and you can see over here on this side of the United States that this empty spot is still here. This is where I'm looking for a linchpin event. Linchpin event kicks off but that's not going to happen until after these these quake swarm flags start getting higher and higher again that's not going to happen until after February the 1st then you'll see pretty much like this fracking this is because of fracking right here this uh, this tall stack here but you'll see these two quake swarm areas escalate higher and higher and higher after February the 1st not until okay so let's head back over to the newsletter There's some interesting stuff stuff in the first volume of Terrell's 2015 newsletter this Andy Lloyd some of you guys have heard of Andy Lloyd's really really smart guy um, Project Camelot interview right here Kerry Cassidy interviews him and uh, Bonnie and I believe it was uh, Christine sent me this video it's very interesting if you listen to the fella he's very familiar with Sentient's work it's really really smart and he's able to to look at the astrophysics, the physics, the geology, and make some, you know, he's, he knows the historical precedent information from Sinchin and um, the Sumerian tablets and things like that. He realizes there's a binary twin out there, and I'm going to make comment 
about some of the things I see positive in his work and some of the things that were I think that he's a little bit off. I did send him an email. I gave him 10 points, and you guys that have been that have been following the research know there are 50 points here, at least. But I gave him the top 10, and then I wanted to know all these things are happening at the same time, um, and I would like to know if there's any other cause, any other stimulus in our solar system that can cause the heliosphere to shrink 25% in the last 10 years, the magnetosphere to weaken uh, now 10 times faster than the scientists pre previously thought. What's causing Jupiter's core to liquefy at the same time? The magnetic pole migration uh, in a series of loops, Earth magnetosphere weakening, the um, the bow shock facing Virgo constellation March 12th and 13th, 2012, you know, the magnetopause reversal. And so I sent the information, and uh, I show them the seismic pattern, the, the highs and the lows. And my question is, what can cause all of these things at the same time, other than the influence of an invisible star? And hopefully I'm going to get that. I've done the same with Marshall Masters, with uh, James McCanny, with many others. You know, you guys are great newsletter subscribers. You're sending me information from other people. I write them and then try to get them to say, well, you know, I, you know, I present the evidence, and the, what I'm looking for is a counterargument, something else that can be the cause other than the inbound black star. And uh, so uh, he did already write me back, and he wrote me back. This is his brief reply, and then I wrote him again this morning, and that my reply is right here in this newsletter. Then um, Dark Sky Watcher, he's coming out with information sent to me by Christine and Sheldon, and you guys are going to get my views on that stuff what is causing the Sun to act so strangely and I'm getting a little flack from my comment on this topic but at the very beginning you can see this appears to be an excellent example of that's the way I began my commentary this appears to be an excellent example of the um, portal to portal cross firing I don't know that that's the answer it takes it it takes some time to gather all the data and to formulate an hypothesis and to prove everything before you can make a definitive conclusion. That's why when you see my commentary that says apparently, perhaps, then this could be the answer. You know, you, you expect some kind of answer whenever you send me this stuff, but drawing conclusions can require a great deal of effort. And remember, science is all about trial and error. And um, so this is what it looks like. But remember, I'm thinking in terms of magnetic portal connections and portal to portal cross firing. That's what caused the magnetopause reversal in the first place. So I'm already thinking along those lines. So of course, you know, it looks like a duck. It's quacking like a duck. I think it's a duck. A magnetic, you know, from magnetic portal connection convergence. So that's the way it looks to me. And, but the jury's still out. I don't know yet. Then uh, Keith Hunter, he's back in the newsletter and uh, very familiar with Keith's work. We've debated on these topics on Revolution Radio. And he showed up at Terrell's research group he is an advocate of some things, you know, there's something happening, but he's going to have, he's going to draw different conclusions. And it um, looks to me like Keith is engaged in a uh, di uh, lettered agency disinformation program, desensitizing program. Of course, I could be wrong about that, too. That's just the way it seems. When I present all this evidence, in other words, what I just sent to, uh, to this fellow, right, th that I just wrote to Andy, well, he reminds me a lot of Keith. And I send the information to these guys, and I look for the uh, counter-argument or, you know, what could possibly turn Earth magnetosphere around for 28 hours. Have you guys got any idea? I do. The influence of another star. It would have to be invisible. And whenever the magnetopause turned around, the tail pointed at the sun, the bow shock pointed at the Virgo constellation. And out of 88 constellations, that just happens to be the constellation where my black star was. So do you, do you believe in coincidence? I don't. And if anybody can think of any reason that uh, we should be looking at all these things at the same time, then I'm very curious to hear your reply. Let me get down to uh, running out of time here. The um, the radio schedule, you'll notice that there's missing links here because the last two weeks I've not done any radio shows. I've been on holiday or whatever you want to call it, on vacation. I will be back to begin my next show. It's going to be on the 7th of January and the 8th of January when I give... When I come out with the next newsletter, volume number two, and then go to share with Deacon John right here on Liberation Nation. So here.